or I want more hours, but I can't get them, the unemployment numbers do not count me. I noticed something very interesting. Um, and I, I just thought about this while I was driving down the road because some of the greatest things I ever think of obviously happen when I'm driving down the road. Um, I noticed, I, okay, backstory, real quick. Um, I've sold stuff on the internet for a long, long time. Um, I got in, you know, when eBay was a couple years old, so to give you an idea. Um, I use things like OfferUp, Craigslist, and so on to try and sell things like furniture locally. So um, I've got this thing I'm trying to sell locally, and I, I actually I had a couple, and I couldn't get any bites. So it's weird because what I'm selling is like half price in new condition. Like it doesn't even look like it's ever been used. Um, and I provided lots of good pictures and a description and so on. And, uh, and I got no bites. I mean, like for a month, nobody said anything to me. Oh, why is that itchy? And, um, and it's not the first thing. I've posted stuff on OfferUp and other, you know, just local sales sites, Craigslist, you name it. But for some reason, despite offering a great thing at a great price, I didn't even get people trying to get me to go down on my price. Um, pretty much everyone... I wouldn't get anyone, really. I would get no messages other than the usual Craigslist scammers and, uh, you know, brand new faceless offer up accounts that I promptly reported, you know, that kind of thing. So, I wouldn't get any bites, but here's why I'm bringing it up. I put two and two together while I was driving down this road um, that I'm not getting any bites, but another friend of mine that I was talking to a week or two ago. They were talking about how they used to be able to sell, they have a child who um, they, you know, smaller children grow really, really quickly. So you end up with this chain of having to dispose of stuff that doesn't fit anymore really, really soon. Like, you can keep stuff for years if you're an adult, but for kids you can't do it. And she would dump off things on sales sites and she had really good consistency with disposing of her old clothes or toys or whatever the child had grown out of um, and getting money so she could put that towards new stuff. But she said that um, she also, in recent times, has not been able to do that either. People used to buy all the kids' stuff. Um, they used to buy it a lot. Like, she could post the stuff up and sell it and be pretty sure it would sell off. But now, nobody's buying this stuff. So, I'm, I'm thinking about it while I'm driving down the road, and I wonder, is her problem selling her children's stuff and my problem getting rid of my stuff related? And could it speak to a bigger economic issue? Because one of the things, um, with, with an economy, um, there are a lot of things that we've come to trust as the traditional metrics of an economy. Um, the unemployment rate is the biggest, that we've just sort of become blindly trustworthy, that a low unemployment rate means everything is hunky-dory. Well, lowest, I think we've got one of the lowest unemployment rates in decades right now. But the problem is that the, the unemployment rate, you know, that whatever that percentage number is, does not account for um, underemployment. For example, if I if I am employed in a 28 hour a week job, um, but I need to be making 40 hours a week worth of money, and I'm trying to find another job or whatever, or I want more hours but I can't get them, the unemployment numbers do not count me. Um, there's also the question of labor participation. Um, the, the acronym NEET, N-E-E-T, stands for not in education, employment, or training. Basically denoting this whole generation of people that um, a good chunk of them 
have simply opted out of society. They are not going to school. Uh, they're not going to any sort of training to learn a new trade. And they're not actually employed. They're just, uh, you know, living with mommy and daddy or one way or another. Un they're unemployed and they have no interest in being employed or they've given up. Um, so while we can count unemployment numbers, we can't reliably count underemployment numbers. We can't reliably count people that are not in the system because they haven't attempted to get unemployment um, or they've fallen off of unemployment and they haven't gained new employment. See, the government forces all employers, um, I think over like five employees in size, to report all hirings and firings to the government, which is how they get these employment numbers in the first place. So if you have a small business that doesn't have like, they have, you have like three people, okay, that's just going to be noise. There's really not going to be much in the way of actual like employee counts to matter. But, you know, when you're talking about say, you know, a big business closes in a county and it guts the job market there and you have a glut of uh, people looking for work that can't get it. Um, and they're on unemployment because they've been laid off. And after a while, they just fall off of unemployment because you can't be on unemployment permanently. Like, you can't do it forever. Um, and you have to do things to stay on unemployment. At some point, your assistance just is, you run out. You can't be on unemployment anymore. Some people, um, they lose their job and they never get unemployment benefits in the first place. Um, but see, the thing with unemployment is it not only registers you as being unemployed, it also tracks that you are applying for jobs to become employed again. But if you're already employed, you can't get unemployment, so you're not gonna be counted. If you are not on unemployment, you're not going to be counted. There are so many ways for you to fall out of the system. I went on a tangent about unemployment and underemployment, but this is how we bring it full circle. I'm trying to sell my used stuff. She's trying to sell her used stuff. <clears throat> the indicators around me are that everyone's doing freaking great. But we can't sell our used stuff. So is the problem that everybody just has so much money that they're not buying used stuff anymore? I seriously doubt that's the case. There's no shortage of people that do not have the money to buy new stuff, especially furniture. Like what I've got, you know, what I've got's over $100 worth of furniture, um, but I'm selling it for like $50, and surely someone would jump on that. So the question is, is it really good and no one's buying, which is unlikely? Or is it actually really bad? And people are, in fact, secretly so bad, so poorly off, that they cannot afford to buy my furniture or her clothes or her shoes or whatever. Is that what's really going on? I don't have an answer for this question that I'm asking. I just don't. But, I can say definitively that it's a question that needs asking, and I'd love to know, and that I'll never know. How can you know the answer to this question? You can't know something that is impossible to track. Um, while I'm here, I'd like to also bring up the statistics on, say, unreported crime. They do that largely by surveys, and I don't care what a statistician says about sample sizes and confidence ratios and all that. You can't track unreported crimes by doing phone surveys, so you can take that and shove it. The whole unreported crime thing is bullshit. You can't track unreported crimes. Someone can say that a crime was committed, but the problem with unreported crimes is that they are not put through the system. No one does any sort of testing to find out whether the unreported crime was actually a crime. Um, people are notoriously poor witnesses. You know, there are a lot of problems with that. So I guess this, this started out as me wondering if there's really 
this big secret economic depression around me that I'm just not able to see because people aren't going to talk about their problems with wealth so readily as they're, you know, spending their money. Um, or, or it started that way and now we're talking about unreported stuff. And that's ultimately what I wanted to get off my chest is that things go unreported. There are things that inherently just are not trackable. And the sooner we accept the fact that we don't know things, the sooner we can move forward with a plan to address what we are observing um, and realize that, you know, just because we don't know exactly what's going on doesn't mean there's not some kind of a problem. can do some observation to get better insight into what's going on, but standing around going, oh no, this is definitely the way things are, when your observations don't really lean in the direction um, of what is being told to you, uh, yeah, I have a problem with that. I think that if people aren't buying used furniture and clothes and stuff in an area that especially when you don't see other markers of wealthiness around you, there's a pretty good chance that there's not a lot of spare money to go around. Um, so, you know, despite having the lowest unemployment numbers ever, and I know for a fact where I am, there's this factory that opened that, uh, you know, employs a thousand people, and they're bussing employees in because they don't have any housing, um, I don't think that they've got enough money. I don't think they're making enough money. I think there's a, a, that people are pinching their pennies and stuffing them in their pockets. And that, you know, on the outside, everything might seem okay, and the numbers might say that everything's fantastic, but when they're not spending money on something as simple as a used piece of furniture that, frankly, would be pretty common, or used clothes for children that are in great shape, I think that there are bigger problems around and uh, something, you know, maybe we're not paying attention to what we really should be. Anyway, I'm going to stop this before I talk in circles anymore. Thanks for listening. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.